Boom! Hey everybody, it's Rick Silva. Thanks for watching. We're going to create a 15 part series on the elevator pitch. So what's an elevator pitch? That's the title of the first video. Have you ever said things like elevator pitch, elevator speed? What's that? What does have an elevator pitch even mean? What's the definition of an elevator pitch? I need someone to help me with my elevator pitch. I need more referrals for my business. If you've said things like that, we're going to cover that and a whole lot more coming up. My name is Rick Silva and I'm a referral coach. I help real estate agents, mortgage lenders, insurance agents, financial planners make more sales without cold calling, door knocking, buying leads, any of that stuff. I show them how to build a referral based business. If you've ever said, I need more referrals, I hate chasing leads around. I hate cold calling. I'm always getting stood up for appointments and I can help you. Feel free to email me if you want more information about that. Thanks again for watching. The title of this one is what's an elevator pitch. And this is the foundation for your referral based practice. Before we get into it, I've always said this, if you're going to learn from someone, no matter what you're learning, make sure that they're an expert. So sometimes you'll go on YouTube and you'll start watching trainings by people who read something in a book and decided to teach it. I've made millions and millions and millions of dollars with what I'm going to teach you. Okay. Again, video number one, let's talk about me first and let's get off of me and on to what is an elevator pitch? So I'm a former recruiter with Cisco Systems and multiple startups in the 90s and early, early 2000s. I've taught thousands and thousands of business owners, students, job seekers, how to give an elevator pitch. I've studied the topic for the last 18 years. I've been facilitating networking groups for the last 18 years. And I found that the elevator pitch was the number one most important component of a, of a networking group. So I'm a networking referral coach and I'm also the rainmaker for my wife's land investing business. So you have to have an avatar if you want to have a successful referral based practice. I'm going to get into avatar. I believe in video number four or five, and then your elevator pitch must fire the reticular activating system. If that's a little too advanced for you right now, don't worry. We're going to get there in future videos. Today is what is an elevator pitch? A little bit more about myself. So in 19, uh, I'm sorry, in 2008, I got divorced during the real estate crash. My house was $300,000 under market. Couldn't sell it, moved out, got an apartment. My income kept going down as you know, with the crash when you're coaching real estate agents or mortgage lenders and they're all leaving the business. That was a rough time. I ended up moving into my office. Those are the closets. I put some of my clothes in everything else. I owned, I put in storage. That's the futon I slept on in my office for six months. And I showered at the gym. I was homeless from that to multimillionaire in nine years. And the key component, elevator pitch, elevator speech, whatever you want to call it. That's my wife, Marcella and I, that's our third time to Tahiti. We've had a chance to travel around the world for nine straight years in her business. And we built her business up with the proper elevator pitch. So in 10 years, we've done well over 750 real estate transactions, never cold called, never door knocked, never bought leads, never, never work with leads. I will, if you've watched some of my other videos, you know, I don't work with leads. I only work with referrals. You're going to get referrals with the proper elevator pitch. The foundation of your referral based practice is avatar elevator pitch. Stick around to the end and I'll show you how you can uh, work with me one on one with that. So those two things, avatar and elevator pitch are the foundation. If you have a strong foundation, you have a great house. If you don't, if you have a caca elevator pitch, which we're going to talk about in video number two coming up right after this, then you have a cracked foundation and your house falls apart and then you don't have a referral based practice. Then you're struggling then you're not making the money you want. Then you're working too many hours and then you're chasing around leads and you're getting stood up up and people asking for discounts. We don't want any of that. We want to work with referrals. How we get referrals is a proper elevator pit. When you have the proper elevator pitch, I want you to imagine when you're meeting people, you're giving everybody your elevator pitch. Your life's not going to change overnight, but over time, you're going to plant the seeds. And over time, that referral network is going to grow and it's going to grow until it starts giving you referrals. So if you imagine each one of those corn stalks is one person, but if you teach them the proper elevator pitch, that one person can send you multiple referrals. So this is a marathon, not a sprint. If you want a marathon, go cold call. I'm sorry, if you want a sprint, go cold call. If you want to have a long, successful career, marathon, referral marketing, proper elevator pitch. So let's talk about what an elevator pitch is, which is also called an elevator speech. An elevator pitch is a quick, well-crafted and often memorized speech designed to sell a product or yourself in a very short time frame. Now that's from the internet. I go a little deeper and say it's specifically to get more referrals, not leads. And it's truly not to sell anything. If you do it properly, your elevator pitch teaches other people how to send you business. 
An elevator pitch, also elevator speech, also known as an elevator pitch, is a brief, clear information or commercial about you. Correct. It communicates about your professional personality, your present employment status, and future job avenues you're looking for. Blah blah blah. It also uh, that's more for the job seeker and the person out of school. If you have a career and you're self-employed, your real estate, insurance, mortgage, financial planner. It teaches other people how to send you referrals. And let me back up one where it says, and often memorized, it's absolutely memorized and it becomes part of you. Your elevator pitch has to become part of you. I'm gonna go deeper into that. Again, this is 15 videos. This is video number one on elevator pitch. Dictionary.com says an elevator pitch is a brief talk or pitch intended to sell or win approval for something as a product or business proposal. Again, I don't believe an elevator pitch should be a sales pitch. It should teach other people how to send you referrals. Now, real quick, if you've seen some of my other videos, if you're watching this one, if you want to see the 14 other videos that are coming, do me a favor, take your fist and smash the like and subscribe button for me. It really helped me out. I have a growing channel. I like to get it a lot larger because I'm trying to get the word out to help more people so they do not have to cold call. So again, if you like what I have on my channel, like and subscribe, really appreciate it. Back onto the training. It's your first impression and it's for referrals. Why should I have an elevator pitch? Because it's your first impression. And in the next video coming right up, I'm gonna show you how not to make a good first impression. Why should I have one? In your networking toolbox, your avatar and your elevator pitch are your most important tools. So if you got your Crescent Ranch or whatever you, you have in your in your toolbox when you're a mechanic. As a pro networker, you have to have an avatar which I can help you create and I'll show you that in a few videos. And then you have to have an excellent elevator pitch. If you wanna have a successful referral marketing practice, you must have them. If you don't, then get really good, good at cold calling. And I encourage you to not get good at cold calling because you're not gonna have a long, long prosperous career if you're if you door knocking and cold calling. Rick, why bother with an elevator pitch? You only get one chance to make a good first impression. An elevator pitch can help you make the most of every first impression while making networking situations easier and more productive. Do you ever feel a little tongue tied? Has anybody asked you what you do and you're like, um, well, um, um, well, um, um, they're not gonna pay you a lot of money to work with them when it's well, mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. An elevator pitch gives you a ready to go introduction, which can take a lot of the stress out of networking, which is our goal. Also, if you have any comments, any questions, any other uh, types of videos you'd like me to shoot, just put it down in the comments. I'll, I'll be more than happy to respond to your comments. The origin of the elevator pitch, where did that come from? First recorded between somewhere between 1995 and 2000 from the idea of persuading someone while on an elevator moving between floors. You're in an elevator, somebody says, hey, what do you do? Boom, what do you say? No time to think about it. Imagine you're on an elevator, it stops, and someone you, you want to work with steps in. The door's closed. 20 or 30 seconds. Quick, what do you say? It's a scripted response. Scripted response. This is where the elevator pitch comes in. It's your secret weapon. It should be 30 to 60 seconds long. The average person speaks 160 to 180 words a minute, so your elevator speech should be between somewhere between 90 and 150 words. As we go through the next 14 videos, I'm going to teach you everything you need to know about what should be in it, the mentality behind it, all that good stuff. Some of the ways I can help you with your referral-based practices, I've got one-on-one -on -one coaching. I've got a 12-part referral course. I can help you write all your approach emails for approaching your power partners, your spheres of influence, and your clients about how to get more referrals. Writing all your referral scripts, writing all your Facebook and LinkedIn posts, I can teach you the methodology behind it and teach you how to get your referral partners to send you more referrals. If you go to one referral away, it's all there. You can go there and check out what I have. This is what I'm specifically keying on right now. So you see this box right here. This is that one referral away, elevator speech critique and elevator speech training. Those two boxes are right here. If you just want to watch the video where I take you step by step through how to actually craft the elevator pitch, then do this one. If you want to do that training and then email it to me, and then I will take your elevator pitch on my screen break it down word by word, line by line, fix it, make it perfect, record it, and put that recording on my YouTube channel so you can get a video critique, also promotion, because it'll be on my YouTube channel, then click this one, and for only 99 bucks, I will do a personalized critique on video of your elevator pitch. Also, down below, you're gonna see a link for the template. That's the four-step template to write, literally write word for word your elevator pitch. It's down below. 
in the description. Click on that, download the PDF. In the next video, we're going to talk about elevator pitch examples, the referral marketing foundation. I'll give you multiple elevator pitches to help you think about what you want. And more specifically for this one, what you don't want in your elevator pitch. Thank you. If you've ever said things like, I need some examples of an elevator pitch. What does an elevator pitch even sound like? What does a good one even sound like? I need someone to help me with my elevator pitch. I need more referrals for my business. If you've ever said things like that, I can help you coming up. This one is elevator pitch examples, your referral marketing foundation. If I'm actually gonna give you examples of what not to do and what to do is coming up in a future video. So I want you to just, I want you to tune your ear for what things you shouldn't be saying. If you're networking now, you've been saying things like what I'm about to show you, you may wanna uh, fix that if you wanna build up a really good referral-based practice. So again, my name's Rick Silva. I was a recruiter with Cisco Systems. I was an engineer with Eastman Kodak. I've been teaching networking professionally for over 18 years. This is July of 2021. And I'm in my uh, 18 years will be next month. I'm a referral coach. I'm also the rainmaker for my wife's real estate business, meaning I bring in most of the business, never cold calling, never door knocking, uh, never generating leads. Everything is referrals, referrals, referrals. So the foundation for your referral network is your avatar and your elevator pitch. We're going to go into avatar in a future video, but I want you to understand that's the foundation. You might have heard my story before, but I'm going to repeat it in every video because if a lunkhead like me can become a multimillionaire in nine years, you can too. But it all starts with avatar and elevator pitch. Got divorced in 2008, paying child support and paying rent. I couldn't afford it. My, my business was crashing. I moved into my office. That's where I hung my clothes. I slept on that futon for six months. I was homeless, showering at the gym. And then I met my wife. And over the course of, an, uh, it's been 10 years now, but it, the first year was a struggle. Second, third, and fourth year income was going up. And now multimillionaire has been around the world nine times with her business without ever buying a lead, without ever knocking on a door, without ever cold calling. It's all from elevator pitch, teaching other people how to send you referrals. We've done well over 750 real estate transactions. Now, if you're in real estate, uh, the first three or four years, we were working 70 or 80 hours a week. The last three years, we don't work over 20 hours a week. We don't cold call. We don't lead generate. To do that many transactions, you got to have a doggone good elevator pitch. That is the foundation of your business. If you want a beautiful home, you have a beautiful elevator pitch. If you don't, you got a cracked foundation. You're not making the money. You see other people. That guy's not as smart as me. How can we make so much more than me? Trust me when I tell you I'm not as smart as you, but I've been able to make a very good living because I put what little brain cells I have into elevator pitch. If you have a good ele elevator pitch, you'll be taken serious, seriously. It's your first impression. It's all you have. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to give you examples. They're not typed out right off the top of my head of elevator pitches that I've heard that are bad. Now you've probably heard most of these and none of them fire the reticular activating system. Trust me, we're gonna go into great detail on that. We've got 15 videos. This is video number two, it's coming. This one I put in here recently because my wife was on a, a class and people were going around the room introducing themselves. And I'm standing there and I'm walking by her office and I hear this lady say, hey everybody, I'm a real estate coach and I, um, well, I work with real estate professionals and um, uh, I really helped them get focused and um, I really helped them make more money um, and um, I specialize in mindset and uh, um, how to make more money. And I'm walking by like, whew, man, there's 30 people there watching this. Who's going to pay her $1,000 a month for that? So it's your first impression, guys. And I go into a lot about that and we'll get to, into that later about you're treated based on how you look and how you speak in the networking world, okay? The dentist, again, don't copy these. These are what not to say, but we wanna get what not to say out of the way first, okay? Hey everybody, I'm a dentist. I'm here in the networker group. Nice to see you all, perfect client for me. Oh, I do teeth whitening. Uh, I do cosmetic dentistry. I help people with snoring and a good client for me. Anybody with teeth? Again, if you've heard these, which I have ever heard every one of these in networking groups, having run 1,500 networking groups, I've heard 30 or 40,000 elevator pitches. This is what not to say. 
Hey everybody, uh, I'm a chiropractor. I help people with back pain. Ugh. Good client for me. Anybody with a spine. Again, what not to say. Hey, if you're enjoying this, if you enjoyed the first one, I've got 40 or 50 or 60 other videos on my channel. Do me a favor. Show me some love. Smash the like and subscribe button. I got a lot more videos coming. There's 13 more in this series coming. I really appreciate if you give me a like and subscribe. Let's do the real estate agent. I've taught over 20,000 real estate agents how to give an elevator pitch. They're the most stubborn. Hey, everybody. My name is Rick Silva. I'm a real estate agent specializing in condos, the castles, and blah, blah, blah area. XYZ. I do this. I do that. Perfect client for me. Everybody needs a home. Everyone's a good client for me. Again, what not to say. The mortgage lender. Hey, everybody. My name is Rick. I help people. Real, uh, rates are historic lows. I help people get loans. Good client for you. Anybody who needs a mortgage loan. Anybody who's paying too much on their mortgage. Some of what I just did was good, but the last part, not good. The financial planner. Everybody, my name is Rick Silva. I'm a financial planner. I manage people's money. Uh, perfect client for me. Anybody who wants to retire with more. Anybody who doesn't know where all their money goes. Anybody who has kids who doesn't have life insurance. Again, things not to say. The insurance agent, everybody. Uh, I do property casualty insurance. Anybody who has a life, anybody who drives a car, anybody who's thinking about driving a car, anybody who has a kid who's about to drive a car would be a great referral for me. Again, I've heard all of these, and this is what not to say. Coming up is what to say. Boom. Hey, it's Rick Silva. Let's party. Let's have some fun. We're going to talk about elevator pitch. Why your elevator pitch sucks. Nine ways to improve your elevator pitch. Have you ever said things like, I hate my elevator pitch? Man, my elevator pitch just sucks. I'm not getting enough referrals. Why doesn't my elevator pitch work? What should you say in an elevator pitch? How do you give the perfect elevator pitch? How can I perfect my elevator pitch? We're going to cover that and a whole lot more coming up. Everybody, it's Rick Silva. Welcome and thanks for watching. This is video number three. This one's titled, Why Your Elevator Pitch Sucks. This is the foundation to your referral-based practice. Everything is based on two things. Number one, your business avatar, which I believe is the next video. Let's just take a look. Yeah, video number four. The next video is going to talk about your business avatar. This one is how to improve. In this video, nine tips to improve your elevator pitch and get more referrals. So tip or point number one, I'm starting with the most important one first. You're accidentally selling to everyone you meet. Now, you, you know people in network marketing, they've been taught the six foot puke factor, and that is to sell your stuff in with, to anyone who's within six feet of you. Sell to them until they buy or die. You're not gonna build a referral-based practice that way. The use of the word you and your is offensive and people don't like it. <clears throat> so if you've been to networking events and somebody comes up to you and goes, hey, here's what I can do for you. Here's, hey, do you have life insurance? Hey, do you want to try this? Hey, are you looking to earn money on the side? It offends people. They're not going to want to be around you at the next event. So try not to use the words you and your. The number one complaint, I talk to thousands of people who go to networking events. The number one complaint, number one, is people are always trying to sell me their stuff. So don't be that person. An elevator pitch is to teach people how to send you referrals, not to sell to them. So people naturally want to help you. Nobody wants to be sold to, especially at a networking event. It's not called the sell your crap to everyone event. It's called a networking event. A lot of people got to learn that difference. Whether you're in a, in, a, in a group networking event, chamber of commerce, you're in a BNI, and i you're in one of my B2B gathering groups, you're not there to sell to each other. You to educate people and teach them how to send your referrals. The way you do that is through a proper elevator pitch. I want to show you what can be offensive. And I'm also <clears throat> trying to teach you to not have the words you and your in your elevator pitch. And I'm going to explain as much as I can. It's offensive. People don't like it. So when COVID hit <clears throat> in March of 2020, uh, I had a bunch of people try to pitch me. So this is these are some Facebook messages sent to me. Hey, Rick, I came across your profile and to see you are in real estate and a business coach. The reason why I didn't circle this you is because that's just part of a conversational sentence until we get to the pitch. With all this going on, we've had a lot of people 
uh, we've had a lot of great success helping people pivot financially. Are you keeping your options open to making money in other industries? Now, I'd like to think I'm one of the top two or three world's leading authorities on business networking, and I'm certainly not going to work with somebody to help me make money who spells you the letter U. That right there alone, the answer is no. But you and your, I'm waiting for the sales pitch. And again, that stuff's offensive. <clears throat> now, a lady did a poll on Facebook asking, how many cups of coffee do you drink per day? I answered it, four cups. This was her Facebook messenger to me. And you've all probably seen this. And it drives you nuts. But here's the thing. In your elevator pitch, if you're using the words you and your, you're this same person. You just are accidentally doing it. You don't know it. Four cups of coffee, Rick. Oh, my God. You need this in your life. Hi. Thanks for your vote on my poll. The Skinny Brew Black Coffee supports weight loss, burning fat, boosts brain function, blah, 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 for increased energy. We're going to pause there. <clears throat> now, I had had five years ago type 2 diabetes, and I lost 40 pounds and completely cured it. Never went on medication for it. But there are some people who are very sensitive about, <clears throat> excuse me, about uh, being overweight. So when you talk about weight loss, you got to be careful how you do that, number one. If you're intermittent fasting or living a kettle lifestyle, it's perfect because it has just two carbs, blah, blah, blah. It goes on to say increased energy, intermittent fasting, won't cause blood sugar surge, blah, blah, blah. For $20, you get three-day sample pack, just like here in the pick. Would you like to go ahead and snag the sample pack? So... We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, you, you, your, you. I even missed one up here. There's seven yous and yours. You want to throw up from that. And throughout this course, uh, I'm going to be showing you how to not do this. And also down below, there's a link so you can download the PDF template. And there's a link to a video where word for word, I teach you exactly what to say in your elevator pitch. You just got to fill in the blank. So go down below. Uh, if you want to download that PDF. Here's another one. Rick, I was looking at your profile. I see you're in real estate. I am an entrepreneur and my company, we love working with smart professional people. The only good thing about this pitch is he, he did what I call put on a pedestal. Anytime you contact somebody cold, put them on a pedestal. So he's calling me smart and professional. It's the only good thing about this. Quick question. Uh Oh, oh no, here it comes. Do you keep your options open in terms of making money outside what you're currently doing as a real estate professional? So if you're watching this and you're in real estate or mortgage, by hourly rate based on income and effort, real estate's the most highly paid industry on the planet, bar none. I can't think of anything other than, you know, CEOs of big giant companies. Short of that, self-employed people, real estate's the highest paid industry in the world. <clears throat> and last year was my best year. So uh, do you keep your options open in terms of making money outside what you're currently doing as a real estate professional? The amazing thing is that he's contacting the most highly paid successful industry in the world. Now, not all the real estate agents are, but I'm in the top 0.0001% of income earners in real estate. You got to watch who you're approaching because it's offensive. So the words you and your, he doesn't probably mean to offend, but he does. Now, the same week, that he sent me that this was one of many. We did 67 deals in real estate and my wife's land investing business last year. This is one commission check within a week or two of when he contacted me. So honestly, no, I'm not looking uh, to make money outside of what I'm currently doing. He should be asking me just so you know what he should be doing. This email should be saying, I know you're successful, whether I am or not, I know you're successful. Would you happen to know other real estate agents who might be struggling? He should be asking me for names and numbers. Now it goes deeper than that. And the script I just gave you is horrible. And as we move on with the trainings, you'll even see a better one. But what's a thousand times better, he should be asking me for other real estate agents who are struggling. So it's offensive when you directly pitch people at a networking event in a networking group, the use of you and your people do not want to be around you. Do not use the words you and your. You have got to know when to be a salesperson and when to be a networker. You're a networker when you're at a networking event. If somebody says, hey, John, I want to learn more about what you do, then you use all the you and yours you want. You you and your them to death. But when you're at a networking event, you never use the words you and your. We'll go into more detail throughout the 10 or 12 or 14 videos on how to do that. Point number two, you're using the sales pitch. I mean, you're using the elevator pitch as a sales pitch instead of an education pitch. 
you should be teaching people what you do, teaching them how to send you referrals. If they want to do business with you, they'll bring it up. You don't need to pitch every person you meet. Just teach them what you do. If they want to do business with you, they will. But you want to teach them so you can get referrals. <clears throat> Always remember, everybody wants to help. There's very few people who don't want to help others. So people don't care about you or what you do. They don't want to be sold to, but they would like to help you. No one wants to be sold to. Everybody wants to help. So remember, teach people how to send you referrals. Don't sell to them. If they want to do business with you, trust me, they'll let you know. Hey, if you're getting value out of this, smash the like button. Subscribe, even hit the bell notifications. we got about 12 or 13 more of these, plus hundreds of hundreds of other networking videos on uh, Elevator Pitch. Somebody just posted, I don't even have one yet. This is so helpful. I get it. Uh, thank you, Rick. Hey, go to One Referral Away. I'll give you the, all the details at the end. Go to One Referral Away. There's a link there. You click it, and there's a video showing you how to craft your elevator pitch. And I'll give you more details on that if you just stick out to the end of the video. Um, point number three, tip number three, why your elevator pitch sucks is because you don't let other people speak first. You have got to let them speak first because then what you do is you model your elevator pitch based on what they do, which kind of goes into point number four. Point number three, let them speak first. So point number four, you can model your elevator pitch based on what they do. So you need to have like 50 elevator pitches, okay? So when you're meeting someone, if they're a piano instructor, I'm going to gear my elevator pitch using in, in examples that will get them to resonate me without directly pitching to them. Again, as we go through the videos, I'll teach you all that stuff. So you got to have a whole bunch. So point number four is you only have one elevator pitch. You need to have a whole bunch of elevator pitches. And in my template, it, it explains all that. Point number five, while delivering the elevator pitch, you should know your target audience. Depending on the audience, you should customize your speech and outline, uh, outline it in a manner that mirrors what they might be looking for. <clears throat> so again, we got to find out what they do. We got to let them talk first. And then this point is basically saying you need to have a customized business avatar, which is the next video, video number four, customized business avatar. So then you know how to, you take an avatar of who your perfect client is, and then you develop the elevator pitch based on who the perfect client is. So you got to have the avatar first, elevator pitch second. Point number six, you're not teaching people how to send you referrals. That's your job as a professional networker. I've got a 12-part course at onereferralaway.com. All the information is there. Teaching people how to send you referrals, <clears throat> That's it's. it takes me you know, five, six, seven hours to teach that to you. There's mental strategies, there's scripting. It's all in the course. It's at one referral away. You're not using word for word quotes. You have got the fire, the reticular activating system. That's going to be in video number 11. We're going to go deep on reticular activating system. But again, that is also at one referral away. If you want to get a head start, it's there. Click the elevator pitch button. I'll be showing you that very soon. But your elevator speech has to have word for word quotes and it has got the fire, the reticular activating system. Also, no one cares about you, so don't talk too much about yourself. No one wants to listen to unnecessary details about you. So let me explain. If you've been in business 30 years and someone else has been in business for two years and you both set an appointment with a potential client, you have 30 years, this person has two years. You show up 20 minutes late. This person shows up 10 minutes early. They are going to hire this person no matter how many years you have in business. So hey everybody, I've been in business for 30 years. I've done this, I've done that, I've done this, I've done that. Nobody cares. That's why in the beginning of my videos, um, you should know who your educator is. I've made millions and millions of dollars with this stuff, but get off the topic as soon as possible. So your elevator pitch should be like one or two sentences about you and then everything else should be about benefits and word for word quotes. So no one cares how long you've been in business really. So don't talk too much about yourself. <clears throat> Point number nine, it's too short or it's too long. So just hear me out here. I'm going to give you some numbers. I want you to understand the numbers. The average person, well, 
Okay, so first, the average person can listen at between 700 and 900 words a minute, just so you know. You're never speaking too fast because people can listen at 700 to 900 words a minute. The average person speaks 160 to 180 words a minute. When I'm on fire and when I'm really booking like I am right now, I'm going about a buck 90 because I've timed it. But the average person speaks 160 to 180 words a minute. Okay. Now, do the math. If you're in a networking group that is 30 second elevator pitches, 80 to 90, 95 words is all you have. If you So if you go 130, it's too long and people are going to be. If it's 30 seconds and you do 40 words, you're 40 words too short. Now, if you have a minute and you do 90 words, you cost yourself 70 words. If you have a minute and it's 230 words, trust me, when they get to about the 170th word, they're not listening. So 30 seconds. You have 80 to 90 words, one minute, 160 to 180 words. That's the math on it being too short or too long. <clears throat> now, the ways I can help you is I provide one-on-one -on -one coaching. I've got a 12-part networking course. I help people all the time with their referral scripts, uh, all their approach emails to their power partners, teach you how to get power partners and clients to chase you. It's all at one referral away. I want to show you what you can click on if you'd like. So. These are the different courses that I have at One Referral Away. We're specifically today talking about elevator speech and elevator speech training. Let me explain the difference. On the left, if you go to One Referral Away and you click this button, you enter your, your, your email address and you can watch a video of me teaching you how to give your elevator pitch. Boom, done, free, end of conversation. If you do this one for $99, <clears throat> same video, but you type your elevator pitch, you send it to me, on video, just like this, I'm going to critique it sentence by sentence. I'm going to retype it for you. Then I'm going to read it to you. And then I'm going to put it on my YouTube channel. So you get promotion. Plus you get me personally critiquing your elevator pitch. That's only 99 bucks. The button's right there at one referral away. Click that button and I'll be more than happy to help you. Also down below, click the link to download the elevator speech template. It's all down below. In the next video, persona marketing and your business avatar. We're going to talk about, uh, I'm going to teach you about what persona marketing is. And I'm going to give you examples. I'm going to read to you two of my business avatars. I'm going to give you ideas on what should, should be in your avatar. Once again, everybody, it's Rick Silva. Thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate it. Comment down below. Anything you need to know, let me know. Thanks for getting on. See you soon. Bye-bye. Boom. Hey everybody, it's Rick Silva. Have you ever said anything like, what is persona marketing? What is a persona marketing profile? What is a customer avatar? Why do I need a customer avatar? What are the benefits of marketing personas? I'm not getting enough referrals. I'm working way, way too hard and I'm just not making enough money. We're gonna cover that and a whole lot more coming up. This video is called Persona Marketing and Your Customer Avatar, where it says this is step one in your referral-based practice. This is actually the foundation of the foundation. You're gonna go customer avatar, then and you're going to create your elevator pitch and that's going to be the basis and the foundation of your elevator pitch and your whole referral i should say your referral marketing business in this video what is a marketing persona slash customer avatar they're the same thing they're exactly the same so let's get into this a marketing persona is a representation of your ideal customer based on market research they go by persona marketing persona or customer avatar or business avatar it's a word for word description of a, your exact bullseye perfect client. So at the end, I'm going to read you two of my personal avatars. So at the end, just stick around to the end and you'll have, you'll see me reading two of my uh, exact perfect avatars to you so you can get an idea. So I want you to think of this saying, would you rather be a wandering generality or a meaningful specific? Hopefully you said meaningful specific, especially if you're paying for leads, buying leads. So if you meet somebody and you say a perfect client for me is anybody, anyone, and your marketing said, hey, anybody's a good client, then you're a wandering generality and you're not a meaningful specific. You have to be laser point specific so you can teach other people how to send your referrals. If you go to each person and say, hey, anybody's a good client for me, then you got to go back and watch the last three videos the use of the words anybody or you and your, you should try not to do. So an avatar 
helps you build an elevator pitch that is exactly on target so you can get the right types of clients, the best clients, the ones you like to work with. <clears throat> if you are too vague or you don't even know how to explain your elevator pitch, then people go, huh? I don't even know how to send this person referrals. I have no idea what they're looking for. <clears throat> so who should have a customer avatar? If you're watching this video, you. Everyone should have one. Unless you enjoy working with cold leads or people you can't help or people constantly asking you for discounts, standing you up, right at closing, right before they took the pen and they were going to sign on the dotted line. How much are you making this? I want a certain percentage. Can you give me some of your... Can you give me some of your uh, commission or they stand you up, they show up late, uh, they leave right at the last minute for a competitor. These things happen when you're working a lot with leads. I want you to work with referrals. So the best way to get referrals avatar, elevator pitch. Every organization should have a customer client avatar. If you need leads or referrals, you got to have one or you're going to be a wandering generality and not a meaningful specific do you want to only work with and sell to potential clients who perfectly match who you want to work with? So if you've ever woken up in the morning and go, man, I got to deal with this guy today. He drives me nuts. Fire them and get better clients. How do you get better clients? You have people send you better and more highly qualified exact referrals that boom, get on target with what you like to work with. So if you're getting value out of this, you could do me a big favor. Number one, hopefully you're getting value out of it. And I've got about 400 more videos coming. So do me a favor, smash that like and subscribe button. It helps me out. If you want to put any comments down, you have any networking questions, put them in the comment section. Why you need a marketing avatar, customer avatar, marketing persona, whatever you want to call it. You need one. So you'll understand who you're trying to sell to. You need to understand it first. The perfect customer will spend more, make repeat purchases and send you more referrals and make you enjoy your career. It's the type of customer you want more of so you can grow your business, so you can work less and make more. Ultimately, you need a customer avatar because you have to know your ideal customer before you can attempt to sell to them. And you have to know all these things before you can craft your elevator pitch, okay? What are the benefits of a marketing persona or customer avatar? It helps you understand your customer's needs, wants, and desires, understand where your customers are spending their time, helps with targeting. If you're doing marketing, I don't like to do a lot of marketing because I don't like to work with leads. I do branding more than I do marketing, but it helps targeting so you're not spending so much money, you're getting better leads. Better referrals, they're way easier to close. You'll work less and you'll earn more money. What are marketing or buyer personas used for? Oh boy. So HubSpot blog says that personas help us all in marketing, sales, products, and services, in your referral-based practice, internalize the ideal customer. We're trying to attract and relate to our customers as real human beings, not just a piece of paper or just a lead. Once you have created your personas, they will help you to ensure that all your promotional activity is geared towards your target audience. By building personas and using them to guide your approach, you can make sure your referral partners know exactly who to refer to. Refer to you. Helps you receive better, more qualified referrals. That's the advantage. We have to have a, a singular focus on what exactly we're looking for and who we'd like to work with. How should I create a marketing persona? How? Personas are important because without knowing who your ideal customer is, it's very difficult to create an effective marketing and referral strategy. You need to come up with questions you're going to ask yourself to generate the avatar. Guess what? The next slide is going to show you the questions. You need to give your avatar a name. So right after I read you the questions, I'm going to show you both of my avatars. They have names. Giving your personas names also helps you kind of visualize what a perfect client is. So if you look at my hands, I always say, if you have a laser point elevator pitch, then you're going to create like a mold of the, what the perfect client looks like. So you, if you know the answers to these questions, this is at a minimum. You need to know these things about your client. What's their age range? Because it's going to change. Like when we meet with people regarding land investing, if they're in their 20s, we're not talking to them really too much about retirement. We're talking about just building wealth and paying off college debt. If they're in their 30s and 40s, we might be talking about, about legacy for the kids and paying for the kids' college. If they're in their 50s or 60s, 70s, we're talking about retirement. We're talking about generational wealth, leave them legacy. So you need to know how old they are to tailor your presentation. 
So what's their gender, marital status, how many kids do they have? All of these things you should know. What's their job, their occupation? How much do you how much do they make? If you can find that out from your referral source, what are they trying to accomplish? What are their goals? So just go down the list and answer the questions. Now, at the very end, I'm going to explain to you how I can help you write this word for word. I've got very special software where we plug all these answers in and it kicks out word for word your avatar, which I'm about to show you two of my avatars and what the software kicks out. So if you're interested in working with me and having me one-on-one -on -one Zoom with you, just stick around for a few more slides and I'll give you all the details. So here's one of my avatars. This one is when I'm looking to build uh, my referral coaching. So if I'm looking for insurance agents, real estate agents, mortgage lenders, uh, financial planners, chiropractors, dentists, network marketers, this is the type of avatar that <clears throat> helps me build my marketing for those types of industries. So my avatar's name is Joyce. Remember, I always give it a name. Joyce is a real estate agent who dreams of becoming a high producing agent. Currently, Joyce's focus is on receiving more referrals and making more money. Ultimately, Joyce really wants to sell more homes and have financial security. Right this minute, Joyce would be ecstatic if she could find more buyers, <clears throat> find more sellers, and stop cold calling. Unfortunately, Joyce, is still, Joyce still needs to figure out how to get more referrals, stand out from all the other agents in her area, get more business without spending tons of money on marketing, dealing with cold leads, yada, yada, door knocking, all that stuff. Joyce is also really frustrated by the fact that her network does not send her referrals. And that happens because she doesn't have a good elevator pitch. Other agents earn more than her, even though she feels she's smarter and works harder. Sellers want too much money and buyers really have no clue what they want in the house. All of this is because they're not the person that I'm looking at for is not focused and doesn't have a good grasp of what they're looking for. So they're getting the wrong types of clients. Plus, she still needs to figure out she needs to get the answers to these questions before she can move forward. How can I get more referrals? How can I find more buyers and sellers? How can I double or triple my income and still work less? Joyce is also still hung up on the idea that cold calling works. Marketing for leads is the best way to sell homes. And there are just so many coaches out there she doesn't know who to hire. In fact, she feels like lead generating, door knocking, and cold calling is what people tell her to do, but she doesn't think it's the best way to succeed. And I agree. When all is said and done, Joyce just wants to be one of the most successful realtors in their office, spend more time with family and on hobbies and still earn more money, feel in control of her life and stop chasing around cold caca leads. To help Joyce, I would invite her to check out my home study course and one-on-one -on -one coaching at onereferralaway.com. She can create an ongoing referral machine without working 60 hours a week and chasing cold leads around. I'm going to show you one more avatar, and then I'm going to show you how you can work with me one-on-one -on, -one on Zoom, where I'll question you, we'll answer the questions, we'll plug it into the software, and it's going to kick out an avatar just like this. This avatar, uh, and I also promise whoever works with me to show them how to build a referral-based practice. Now, this one is for my wife's real estate uh, land investing business when we're developing our marketing materials and our elevator pitch for the land investing business, this is one of many avatars. My avatar's name, my avatar's name is Kelly. Kelly is a concerned investor who dreams of becoming a millionaire. Currently, Kelly's focus is on finding a winning investment and finding better and safer investment. Ultimately, Kelly really wants to retire with more and leave a financial legacy. Right this minute, Kelly would be ecstatic if she could stop losing money, prevent further money loss, find an investment that is easy, understandable, and makes money. Unfortunately, Kelly still needs to figure out how to find a great investment, invest in real estate to create wealth, and figure out how to purchase real estate with an old 401k and an IRA or an IRA. <clears throat> We've done about 600 of those for our clients. Kelly is also really frustrated by the fact that her 401k only goes up when she puts money into it. Her 401k is a 201k. She's tired of tenants, toilets, termites, troubles, and taxes. Plus, she still feels the need to get the answers to these questions before she can move forward. How do I find a great investment that doesn't go down when the wind blows? Where should I put my money when I sell my investment property? Where can I find an investment that doesn't stress me out? Kelly also still hung up on the idea that this investment doesn't create cash flow. 
Creating wealth takes time and she needs to understand what long term means. She thinks she needs a lot of money to invest in real estate. In fact, she feels like volatile markets actually don't want her to succeed with finding a winning investment or finding better and safer investments. When all is said and done, Kelly just wants to reach financial freedom, have a worry-free investment, and have financial peace of mind. To help Kelly, I would invite her to check out one of my webinars so she can learn about how land banking can secure her future, and that is at www.dirtisgold.com. I promise to show her how to invest like the wealthy do. So those are my two avatars, one for my coaching business, one for my real estate business. From that, we then create multiple elevator pitches. So as you're going through all of these videos, you need to have this before you can craft your elevator pitch. And I can help you with all of that. And it's all in the videos. Plus I have downloadable PDFs in the videos. If you'd like to work with me one-on-one -on -one to create your avatar. So we'd be on Zoom just like this. And I'll bring up the software. You'll see the questions. We'll answer them. I'll help you. And then it's going to spit out an avatar just like you saw. So that's what I'll do. One-on-one -on -one personalized you and I takes anywhere from 20 to 45 minutes. It's 149 bucks. If you're interested in me helping you craft your, your avatar, email me one referral away at gmail.com. My name is Rick Silva, one referral away at gmail.com. Thanks very much for watching. Have you ever said things like, what's the purpose of an elevator pitch? Why is an elevator pitch even important? Where should I use my elevator pitch? What's the goal? What's the end game of an elevator pitch? I'm not getting enough freaking referrals. I work way too hard and I don't make enough money. If you've said things like that, we're going to cover that and a whole lot more coming up. Hey everybody, this is video number five in at least 10 to 12 part series on the elevator pitch. This one's called, what's the purpose of an elevator pitch? In this video, what's the purpose of an elevator pitch? <clears throat> One of the best definitions is right here. The purpose of an elevator pitch, describe a situation or solution so compelling that the person uh, you're with wants to hear more even after the elevator ride is over. So if you have, I call it setting the hook. If you have a really good elevator pitch, people are chasing you. Door knocking, you're chasing. Cold calling, you're chasing. Buying leads, you're chasing. You meet with centers of influence and power partners. You teach them how to send your referrals and you get people chasing you. You can only do that with an elevator pitch. If you're looking for business, it comes down to not having an avatar and not having a good elevator pitch. That's it. So point number one, the main aim of an elevator pitch is the elevator speech or pitch is to set the hook right. So if it's compelling, people will chase you. Point number two, be, uh, by preparing an elevator pitch, not only do you have a script ready for whenever the opportunity arises, but it allows you to put down in writing why you think you're the best candidate for the job, for the referral, for the business, whatever. By crafting an elevator pitch, it allows you to have a prepared script for developing new relationships. You never know. You could be in the line at the grocery store. You could be at a bookstore. You could be in a restaurant. You overhear a conversation. And you want to interject, offer your services, or if somebody asks you what you do, you should have a prepared script that you can immediately throw out there. Point number three, write down your objective or your goal. Do you want to make a sale, get a job, gain a prospect, enlist support for an idea, earn a referral, something else? Ultimately, you should have a lot of elevator pitches, a lot of elevator pitches. But each one has to have a goal. And if you remember from the last video, I had a picture of a guy holding a bow and he's aiming at a target. If you don't have a target aim, it's random. Um, what do you do? Um, well, you know, I uh, uh, no one's going to listen to you. It's boring. It's not professional. Bad first impression. It has to be scripted. So I need your help. I want to get to 1,000 subscribers. I have about 330. Do me a favor. Hit that subscribe button and a like button. Also... If you want me to cover a certain networking topic, if you want me to do cover an elevator pitch for your industry, put it in the comments below, and then I'll be sure to do that ASAP. Thank you very much. Back to it. Point number four. While delivering the elevator pitch, you should know your target audience. That's You get that from your avatar. Depending on the audience, you should customize your elevator speech and outline it in a matter that meets the specific interests and concerns of the audience. So if, if you're a real estate agent, and let's just say you're talking to a mortgage lender 
about becoming a COI, but you're giving them an elevator pitch on selling them a home or an elevator pitch that you would use on a financial planner, it doesn't resonate with them and they black out. If you are talking to a potential client and your elevator pitch talks about first time home buyers in certain areas, but it just so happens this person's an investor and they're buying their third home. The second you say, I specialize in first time home buyers, the investor's like, this guy's not for me. You just lost the client. <clears throat> so the big trick is to have them talk first. And then you, in your mind that fast, you tailor your elevator pitch to their needs. And the only way you can do that is you have to have multiple memorized elevator pitches and it has to be scripted. Where to use it? Networking groups, job fairs, mixers in your email. We'll get into that later in another video on your website, marketing materials in your voicemail resume. So I want to show you something. I have a video on my YouTube channel, One Referral Away, that talks about how I made a million dollars with my business card. Let's see if we can get this to focus really fast. Let's see. And I'll edit this video for the final. There, there it is. I don't know if you can read that. So I'm going to read this to you. This is the last half of my elevator pitch. Hey, everybody. A good referral for me is a friend, family member, or client who says any of the following. I want to diversify my portfolio. The only way my 401k goes up is when I put money into it. Now, this is for my wife's land investing business. I'm sick of tenants, toilets, termites, and trouble. The stock market's too volatile. My investments are stressing me out. I need to do a 1031 exchange. I cannot put enough money away to retire. So not only do I have my elevator pitch memorized, like 15 of them, but I have it on the back of the card. So when I hand them a business card, they can see the word for word quotes and they can take them with them. <clears throat> so the hand clap story. So when I was in college, I was moving a guy. I was a, I was an electrical engineer in college and then I was moving furniture and I was with uh, uh, what happened to be a hiring manager for Hewlett Packard. He, he was sitting, having lunch with me on his porch. You know, we're having lunch and he goes, you don't seem like the commercial mover type or a mover type. What, what, what are you doing? And I said, well, I'm in college. I'm about to get my electrical engineering degree and I'm going to be looking for a job uh, in a couple months. And he goes, can I give you some advice? He said two, two pieces of advice. Number one, the hiring manager is just as nervous as you are. Because if he hires the wrong person, his job's on the line. So don't be nervous because he's nervous. He's as nervous as you are. So just hold that in. Secondly, he said, I'm going to tell you the hand clap story. They did a study. There was a guy writing a book on job interviews. He sat in the lobby of somebody who interviewed all day long. <clears throat> and he said, when, so, when, a, when a potential hiree walks in, I want you to clap your hands the second you know you would not hire the person. And he watched and watched and watched. And that guy would clap his hands on average 6.3 seconds. So he'd walk, he'd look at them, lack of eye contact, handshake. Maybe they just weren't dressed properly. There's something called the halo effect. We're not going to go over today. But you, you're treated based on your appearance. And the average time for him to clap his hands, knowing he would not hire the person is 6.3 seconds. So proper elevator pitch, eye contact, firm handshake. That's the most important. <clears throat> so they did a study. This is a different study. <clears throat> I'm not going to read this whole thing to you. The first impression counts. The first impression is formed in just seven seconds. So that story was told to me. I'm 52 years old. That story was told to me, <clears throat> excuse me, when I was 23. So 29 years ago, this study was done not 29 years ago. I think like five years ago. First impression, seven seconds. Elevator pitch, eye contact, handshake. Uh, and then also knowing what your client complains about so you can finally craft your elevator pitch. Number eight, appearing arrogant or aloof when maybe you're just shy. But uh, I'll just read this to you first. For example, one of my clients thought she could just wing it and uh, say she was looking for a job, just blah, blah, blah. The problem with a vague statement like this is that you don't provide clarity. You don't provide confidence. Even worse, saying this can make you come off as needy or entitled. I'm going to advance on this and go 0.8, 0.5 to give you a, a better example. So the gym story, I have a friend, Jim, who was in my networking group for years. <clears throat> and after a few months, this was an ele elevator pitch. Hey, everybody, you all know what I do at this point. So you know who to send me. Let me ask you a question. Golden Arches, what company? McDonald's. 
Is it the green arches one week, the golden arches the next week, the purple V the next? What's the white swoosh on the side of a tennis shoe? Nike. What are the three lines, Adidas? It's called branding, and you got to do it over and over and over until it ingrains in someone's head. The minute you think everyone knows who you are, nobody knows who you are. So it comes off as arrogant if you say, ah, I, I do I do real estate and I'm looking for buyers and sellers. It just comes off as you don't care or aloof or cocky. You have to have this thing scripted because the scripting brings out the confidence. If you're an introvert, by having an elevator pitch prepared, now I'm, a, I'm an introvert with an extroverted job. By having an elevator pitch prepared, it eases the anxiety, especially of going to networking events to interact with somebody new and prevents you getting caught off guard. If somebody ever asks you what you do, it's ready to go. You have it memorized. Just say it. Just say it. Just say it. Point number 10, it doesn't make them yawn. TMI, baby. Too much info. It's too long. <clears throat> so let me give you an example of, Rick, I can't do my elevator pitch in 30 seconds or 60 seconds. I do too much. Bull. Let me give you an example. So the Civil War, if you go to a library or a bookstore, there are shelves and aisles, hundreds and thousands of books, <clears throat> tens of thousands and millions of pages written about the Civil War. So you do too much. Your elevator pitch is too long. You can't get it done in 60 seconds. I'm going to tell you about the Civil War in five seconds. The North fought the South and the North won. There's a Civil War in one sentence. So you can do your elevator pitch in a minute. I promise. The North fought the South and the North won. Done. There's a civil war. You don't need 5,000 books. Okay. You don't need to do a three minute, 30 second elevator pitch. Point number 11, no one wants to listen and unnecessary details about you. Uh, try not to talk about yourself too much. Don't include too much unnecessary details and especially acronyms. If you're in an industry that has a lot of acronyms, most people don't know what they even are. So try to speak. To, basically, your elevator pitch, uh, a, a, a seven-year-old should understand it and your grandmother should understand it and be able to like explain it. Dumb it down. Okay? Point number 12, if you don't put any effort in, get winged effort. You get winged results. You got to put the effort in. You want to have... Big results with the elevator pitch. You want so if you want winged efforts, you get winged results. You got to put in the work. Also, if it's confusing, or if it's got too many acronyms, or just blah. Remember, the confused mind does not buy. Also, the confused mind does not refer. You're not going to build a referral based practice with the Kaka elevator pitch. It's got to have avatar first, then build an elevator speech off of that avatar, so it's clear and concise. Woo! All right. Comment down below any other topics you want me to cover on networking. Have a great day. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. Boom. I love doing that countdown. Have you ever said things like, how long should an elevator pitch be? I don't know what to say when I'm at a networking group. What do I say and how long should I talk when I meet somebody in a networking environment? We're going to cover that and a whole lot more coming up. Thanks for joining. This is video number six in a 10-part series. The title is, how long should an elevator pitch be? Okay, so how long should an elevator pitch be? That's a loaded question and I have a bunch of answers for you. Uh, the joke is, is about the, the length of the average elevator ride. So anywhere from, depends on how many floors you're going in an elevator. Think about if you're on an elevator or if you're lying at the grocery store, or whatever, but if you're in an elevator and somebody says, hey, what do you do? You better have it memorized. It better be concise and it better get them to wanna learn more when they walk off the elevator to ask you for your contact information. This is a historical write-up on the elevator pitch. For, for decades, salespeople have practiced something called an elevator pitch. The idea was, that they had to sell themselves and their product or service in the time it took to ride an elevator from the ground floor to the top floor. Every good salesperson had an elevator pitch and could perform it flawlessly at a moment's notice. So you gotta have the thing memorized. Now, a lot of people don't know this. So the average person can listen at about 850 words a minute. So you hear those guys, those auctioneers or those guys that speak really fast and they're speaking between 700 and 900 words a minute. You can understand everything they see. They say the average person speaks 160 to 180 words a minute. <clears throat> so by mathematics, if you're told you get 30 seconds, then you have 80 to 90 words. If you get 60 seconds, you have 160 to 180. If you get 90, 
180 words a minute. If you get 90 seconds, then you got 240 to 260. So you can do the math. And in Microsoft Word, down in the left-hand corner, there's a word counter that can always tell you how long, uh, how many words are in your presentation. So you can use Microsoft Word to help you with the mathematics of that. But the average uh, person speaks 160 to 180 words a minute. So <clears throat> playing on how long should the elevator pitch be, my first question to you is, how long did they tell you you have? Some networking groups, you get 30 seconds. Some you get 60. Very few give you 90 seconds or two minutes. So it's usually 30. could be 15 seconds, 30 seconds, 60 seconds. How long did they give you? And then we can use the mathematics to figure it out. And then we got to talk a little bit more about what should be in that elevator pitch. <clears throat> Excuse me. So again, the answer depends on uh, how long did they tell you you have? We're going to dig a little deeper. So elevator pitches tend to last between 30 and 90 seconds. When successful, the person should be asking for your contact information. If they're not asking for your contact information, whether to be a referral partner or a client, it did not do its job. And we have previous videos. This is video number six. There's five other videos. If you go look on the YouTube channel, start looking back. That will cover a lot of these things. 90 seconds is appropriate. Uh, it's generally appropriate when you're being introduced. Uh, you're going to be speaking. Um, you're more of the focus. Like when I get introduced, my bio that I have them read about me is 90 seconds. It's generally <clears throat> when you're giving your own elevator pitch, it's going to be 30 to 60 seconds. It's very rare you're going to get 90 seconds. Um, real quick, thank you very much for watching. Some of you have been with me a long time. If you're getting value out of this and you want to see hundreds more videos on networking and how to build a referral based practice, or you're enjoying it, uh, try liking and subscribing. Just pound that button, like and subscribe, hit the bell notifications if you want to know when the other videos I try to do every Tuesday or every 30, Thursday uh, videos on networking and referral generation. <clears throat> 60 second pitches lasting are often used when you have a dedicated audience who's already committed to hearing about you. Generally, that's networking groups, referral groups. Uh, it's also the perfect length if somebody asks you what you do. More than 60 seconds, I'm going to start falling asleep on you. Um, a, a website welcome video, which is, could be called a stinger or an intro video on your YouTube channel, or on your website. Don't go over 60 seconds. <clears throat> 30 seconds or less, what most networking interactions uh, fall into, generally. The pitch would usually include who you are, what you do for a living, what you're passionate about maybe, or why you're passionate about it. And then also you always want to include benefits. I know that's a lot to fit in. It's a lot to fit in in 30 seconds, but keep going through the videos and you'll see how to do it. Generally, networking groups, mixers, and trade shows are where you're going to use 30 seconds because any longer than that, again, people are going to start falling asleep. A mistake with elevator pitch is too long. It's almost never a mistake if it's too short. It's almost always a mistake if it's too long. So cramming too much into your elevator pitch is a way to lose the attention. They're looking at you, but they, they don't hear a word you're saying. <clears throat> and I'm going to give you some more examples of how to keep them listening. So no matter what your elevator speech uh, is or what you do or how long you've been in business, it must contain a few words. Rick, how do I tell every how do I tell somebody everything about me, everything I do in 30 seconds? It's just not enough time. I'm gonna prove to you right now it is enough time. Okay. Go to any bookstore or any library and find the books on war. And you will find rows and rows and rows. Thousands of books have been written on the Civil War. You couldn't you could spend your whole lifetime and you couldn't read all the books on the Civil War. It's long and it's a lot of words. I got it. Guess what? The North fought the South and the North won. Now you don't have to read all the books. So if I can take thousands of books to two sentences, the North fought the South and the North won. You can tell me what you do and the benefits of working with you in 30 seconds, I promise. Just keep going through these videos. <clears throat> uh, the elevator pitch is not supposed to be a formal presentation to give someone all the information. Again, don't speak all day long. It does have to be attention-grabbing, intention intriguing, uh, and 
whoever you're speaking to, whether it's an audience or one person, you want to get them chasing after you. We've covered this in video. It was either number one or number two. Try never to use the words you and your because you're selling to the person. In a networking environment, you should never be selling to the person. You should be educating them on who you are and what you do so they can think of other people to refer to you. Maybe they'll want to do business with you. Maybe they won't. But if you're pitching and you're selling to every person you meet, the next time you go to a networking event, they're not going to want to talk to you. They're going to want to run from you. Try never to use the words you and your. Hey, do you need this? Hey, do you need that? That's another reason they're going to stop listening. You know how you hear, so you've heard someone else speaking to you and you start to lean in and you're like, man, I like this guy. Man, I want to learn more about this guy. I want to, I want to do business with this guy. That's what your elevator pitch needs to be able to do to the other people in a short time. The good mentions your product or service tells how it will help your potential clients and referral partners without selling to them without selling to them. So it's, you don't want too much. We do this, we do that, we do this, we do that. Cause it's too much about you and not about benefits. People don't care. <clears throat> so just to recap what we covered, your elevator pitch length. The answer is it depends. Did they tell you how long you have? If you have a minute, you have 170 words ish. If you have 30 seconds, you got 80 words to fit it in. So you need to calculate the length. You need to be concise. Don't pitch people and say, hey, I can do this for you, do this for you, do that. Nobody wants to be sold to. They want to be educated and they want to learn how to help you. So put requests in your elevator pitch. I hope you enjoyed the training. I'll see you in the next video. Like and subscribe. Email me anytime. Thank you very much. Take care. Bye-bye. Boom. Hey, everybody. Thanks for getting on. Have you ever said things like, I need to hear some good elevator pitch examples so I know what to say? I don't know what to say when I'm at a networking group. What do I say when I meet someone in a networking environment? I need more referrals. If you said things like that, we're going to cover that and a whole lot more coming up. This video is titled, What are the Best Elevator Pitch Examples? If you've watched all the other videos, it's getting boring. My name is Rick Silva. I'm a referral coach. If you need more referrals, if you're a real estate agent, mortgage lender, financial planner, insurance agent, chiropractor, dentist, network marketer, I can help you just get in contact one referral away at gmail.com. The way I teach elevator pitch is that you're not constantly selling because if you're always selling to people, then... When you go to networking events, people are not going to want to be around you. They're not going to want to walk up to you. Oh, here comes that sales guy again. So try not to be a salesperson everywhere you go. Teach people how to send you referrals. <clears throat> so when are elevator pitches effective? When somebody asks you what you do or when you're networking, because sooner or later, you're going to get to talk about yourself. So whether you're in a networking group, uh, you're in the grocery store, someone's going to ask you what you do. You need something to say. And you need to have them at different lengths. We're going to cover three today. We're going to cover the 60 second, the 30 second, and the 15 second word for word. So you need a good elevator pitch. Remember, if you wing it, you get wing it results. It, an elevator pitch should never be an opportunity to sell. It's to educate and to get referrals. That's my opinion. And try not to use the words you and your. At least attempt not to word, use the words you and your. Things remember, people don't know who you are. They don't care who you are. So keep it brief. No one needs to know how long you've been in business. You need to earn the right to talk, talk to people more than 60 seconds. So just be clear. Don't talk too much about yourself. So the four parts of an elevator pitch, basically, almost no matter what industry you're in, would be your name, your company name. What do you do? What are the benefits of doing business with you? And then word for word quotes. Now, and in the description below, there's a link to a PDF template. You should click on that and download it and then watch the video that I have at onereferralaway.com where you can I'll literally in the video help you do the elevator pitch word for word. And then you can use the template to fill it in. Okay. We're going to go over the 60 second, the 30 second, and the 15 second in as much detail as I can. I want to give you an example of how that sounds if there's too many you's and yours in there because then you start sounding like a salesperson. So here's a 60 second elevator pitch. Just sit back, relax and listen. Hey everyone, my name is Rick Silva with XYZ Company. I'm a residential real estate agent specializing in the Tri-Valley area of the Tri-Valley area of the Bay Area. When hiring me, I can help you in some of the following ways. I'm a skilled negotiator, so when you are buying, I will do everything I can to get you the best price. When you are selling, I will do everything I can to get you top dollar. 
I have a great marketing team that helps me get the word out on your property to get you the most for your property. That's a, that's a total sales pitch. A lot of people mistakenly use those in networking groups and by accident, you're selling to all the other members. You're not going to get referrals that way. People are just going to be like, oh, so let's go over how we do that with the removal of the use and yours. So you teach people how to send you referrals. Now, I know we just started, but if you're getting value out of this, out of my channel, out of other videos, do me a favor, like, and subscribe, uh, comment below any questions you have. If you want me to do a video on your industry to show you how to do an elevator pitch, I just might do that, but you got to fill out the template first. Okay. So like, and subscribe would help me a lot. Let's go back to the four parts, name and company name. What do you do slash benefits word for word quotes. And again, the templates down below, click on it, get the template, watch the video, learn how to craft your elevator pitch word for word. Uh, I've hesitated doing what I'm about to do because I don't want you to steal mine. I want it to be your wording. I've created one for real estate, but it works for in the industry, <clears throat> but I'd like you to use your words. So try not to copy mine too much because you, it's got to be you. It can't be Rick. It's got to be you. The four parts look something like this. This is the size it would be. It'd be Rick Silva with my company name. I am a what? And then you're going to put the benefits in. Again, this is all covered in the video. That's at oneReferralAway.com. But you want two or three sentences about the benefits and you want three to five word for word quotes. Let's see what that looks like. Here's a full 60 second introduction. I'll read the whole thing for you, everybody. My name is Rick Silva with XYZ Company. I'm a residential real estate agent specializing in the Tri-Valley in the Bay Area of California. When hiring me, my clients benefit in some of the following ways. I'm a skilled negotiator, so when buying, I will do everything I can to get them the best price. When selling, I'll do everything I can to get them top dollar. I have a great marketing team that helps me get the word out and most exposure for the property. Notice no use in yours. A perfect referral for me would, would be when you hear a friend, family member, or client say into the following, man, we've been renting for a long time. I wonder if it's time to buy. I've been saving my money for a long time. I wonder what I qualify for. We're interested in buying an investment property. We're empty nesters, so it's time to downsize. We have baby number three on the way. Uh-oh, time to get a larger home. That would be a great referral for me. That's what you would use to teach other people how to send you referrals. Okay, you notice there's no use in yours in there. You're not trying to sell to them. The only you is right here because you got to ask them to listen for the quotes. The video at One Referral Away will go over great detail and I break down every one of these sections. Let's talk about the 30-second elevator pitch. So what we're doing now is we're, refer we're removing at least one sentence from the benefits and we're removing, we're only going to have two to four quotes. So here's your 30 second elevator pitch. Hey everybody, my name is Rick Silva. I'm a residential real estate agent. When hiring me, my clients benefit in some of the following ways. I'm a skilled negotiator. So when, when buying, I'll do everything I can to get them the best price. When selling, I'll do everything I can to get them top dollar. A perfect referral for me when you hear a friend, family member, or a client say to the following, we've been renting for a long time. I wonder if it's time to buy. I've been saving my money for a long time. I wonder what I qualify for. We are interested in buying an investment property. Now, you need to plug those in if you do condos, townhomes, whatever it is, but it got to be word for word. Again, it's covered in the video one referral away. So you'll notice we shortened it. We're not using you and your, and in any of these, I'm not saying I've been in business for 30 years. I've done, nobody cares how long you've been in business. They want to know what's in it for them, short and sweet to the point. Here's your 15 second. 15 seconds is going to be your name, what you are. And the most important part of an elevator pitch, more important than the benefits, are the quotes. So here is your 15-second elevator pitch. Hey, everybody, my name is Rick Silva. I'm a residential real estate agent. Hey, a perfect client for me is if you hear someone say, we've been renting for a long time. I wonder if it's time to buy. I've been saving my money for a long time. I wonder what I qualify for. We're interested in buying an investment property. Again, this needs to be personalized for you, but there's a 15-second elevator pitch. The recap on that part is we didn't use the words you and your. Remember, nobody cares about you, so you don't have to talk about how long you've been in business. Nobody cares. Um, your elevator pitch is your first impression. Should be professional, should be planned out. I start with the 60 second and then I pare that down so I can get my 30. I pare that down so I can get my 15. If I need a one, if I need a two minute, I'm just going to add a sentence to benefits and a couple more um, quotes at the bottom. And remember, people say, oh, 60 seconds, 15, I can't say anything in 15 seconds. There's a thousand books written on the Civil War, millions of pages. The North fought the South and the North won. So in two seconds, I just told you 
about a million pages in the library. The North fought the South, the North won. If I can sum up the Civil War in one sentence, you can do 15 seconds on your elevator pitch. Thanks very much for watching. So, hey, everybody, my name is Rick Silva. Hey, have you ever said things like, how do I attract more referrals? How do I get more people to send me referrals? I need more referrals for my business. My referral business is way too inconsistent. Well, we're going to cover those questions and a whole lot more coming up right now. This one's titled More Referrals Using the Reticular Activating System. I'm a referral coach. I'm not a real estate coach. I'm not a chiropractic coach. I'm a referral coach. So I can teach you how to build a foundation so you can have a referral-based practice so you don't have to chase around leads and cold call and door knock and have people constantly complaining and asking a million questions. And at the last minute, they ask you for a discount or they go with someone else. All of that happens when you have a lead-based practice. Generally, none of that happens when you have a referral-based practice. By Tony Robbins, I've always believed in what you focus on grows. Where focus goes, energy flows. The reticular activating system is called the RAS, provides the major pathology for being in the flow state. So we're going to talk about what the reticular activating system is, where it is, how it works, and how we can use it to make millions of dollars because I've done it and I've taught a lot of people how to do it. I want you to see how to do it. So we're going to get into that right now. So question today, how can I get more people to send me referrals? Man, I send people referrals. I never get any back. I hardly ever get any referrals, past clients. People don't send me a lot of referrals. I don't know what's going on. They don't know how to send referrals. No, you don't know how to teach them to send you referrals. So we need to get good at teaching people. We need to program their mind so they know what to look for and listen for to send us more referrals. It's your job to program their reticular activating system. So you need to teach them what to look for and listen for. And it has to be laser point specific. We're going to get we're going to get deeper into that. So the reticular activating system, it's above the spinal cord. It's about two inches long. It's it's about it's about the width of a pencil. Some people say it's the size of a thumb. It's somewhere about yay big. What it does is it connects the subconscious part of our brain with the conscious part of our brain. Most all senses come through um, the reticular activating system. There's a picture of what the RAS looks like. It's in your brainstem. So what the reticular activating system does, it filters out the unnecessary and focuses on the important. You may have seen uh, the car example, the restaurant example, if you've looked at other reticular activating system. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take this video deeper than I've ever seen anybody teach the reticular activating system, uh, and then we're gonna come, we're gonna have it specifically focused on referrals. So, if we just look at the first sentence, it, it focuses on the important and it filters out the unnecessary. So, here's one example: you're in a restaurant, there's noise everywhere, and yet you're still able to fully concentrate on the person sitting across from you speaking to you. And that's because your reticular activating system can block out all the noise and give you laser point, laser point specificity or specific topic, which is in that case, listening to the person speaking to you. It's used in sustaining life. It helps make goals happen. Um, writing down goals, vision boards. When you're looking at your goals or looking at the vision board, you need to log. You need the reticular activating system to tap into the law of attraction. So the only way you can use the law of attraction is the reticular activating system taps into it. The reticular activating system, as I'm gonna show you in a second, is a radio antenna. And I'll explain that here in a second. So it helps goals happen. It helps you focus on, oh, so the third one is you need to focus on what you want, not what you don't want. Because if you don't have enough money or enough sales and you can, you're always focusing on not having money, your reticular activating system is going to make that come true for you. If you're not selling enough homes, doing enough loans, adjusting enough people's back, and you're thinking about that, it's going to give you more of that. So you got to focus on what you want, not what you don't want. That's why you need to focus on your goals, not on the lack. <clears throat> you need to be intentional about what you want. Uh, identify and have that subconscious part of your brain work for you. The reticular activating system brings to light what you're looking for. So if you start looking for negative stuff, it's going to bring you negative stuff. Why I put that in there twice? Oh, that's why I got the picture in the book. Most people who teach the RAS talk about the car. So let's just use the car example. You have thought about a car. You've bought a car. 
you've you've read about it in a magazine and when you got the car or when you really started thinking about it in this case let's talk about the gray bmw you thought about buying a gray bmw everywhere you look you see a gray bmw you walk out the front door man i was just thinking about a gray bmw there it is you're driving down the road you see 17 gray bmws oh my god everywhere i look there's gray bmws now here's the thing make very clear they were always there the gray bmws are always there you just decided to start noticing them. That's the reticular activating system. Um, you were thinking about a, a, a health product. You were thinking about going vegan. You open up a magazine to any random page as a vegan article. You go, you go on the internet, you're scrolling around, vegan stuff's popping up all over the place. Uh, you're, you're talking to a friend, you're hearing conversations, vegan, vegan, vegan. You're watching TV, vegan, vegan, vegan. It was always there. You just decided your reticular activating system just decided to start noticing it now i'm going to take this to a level that has never been explained to you because i've watched every reticular activating system video i could find on youtube <clears throat> what i'm about to show you is going to take this so deep and then i'm going to teach you how to make millions of dollars with it i don't care what industry you're in if you're getting value out of this i would really appreciate it if you smash the like button even hit that bell notification so you know when the next videos are coming up like, subscribe, tell your friends and family about uh, one referral away, trying to help you get more referrals. Again, if you need a referral coach, my information's down below. Hit me up, go to onereferralaway.com and uh, we can talk. So now <clears throat> I'm going to take this deep, deep, deep for you two ways. I want to show you uh, how the reticular activating system connects to the law of attraction. Now, the next video after this one, the next video is using the law of attraction to get the referrals and to create wealth. But we got to learn about the reticular activating system first and why you need to be specific. <clears throat> so I want you to think about an old school radio. You can think about your Sirius satellite in your car. But if you think about an old school radio that has a dial that tunes in the radio station. So if you want to have uh, country music, then you tune the radio and the antenna starts vibrating at a frequency that taps into the country music station and then the music flows through and it blasts out your speakers. You want to listen to rock and roll, you tune the radio to the rock and roll station, the frequency of the antenna picks it up out of the air, it goes into the antenna and you get rock and roll music. You like classical music tuned to the classical music radio station, this is vibrating and it attracts the like kind vibration flows into this and comes out the speaker. <clears throat> the reticular activating system works exactly the same way. You have got to tap into the radio station of referrals. Okay. So this gets a little, gets, gets a little crazy about what I'm going to talk to you about now. I'm going to talk to you about an acorn, <clears throat> but I want you to understand you have got to tap into, let me cover something else with you. I want you to understand this also. So, if I want to listen to country music, rock and roll music, classical, whatever it is, you have got to believe it's it's in my hand. I'm holding it in my hand. In fact, let's do this. I should have done this from the start. So this is the antenna. Whatever radio station we want, we tune it and it flies in here. So understand country music, I'm holding it in my hand. I'm holding it. I'm holding rock and roll music in my hand. And if you do this and hold your hand out, you're holding country music and rock and roll music and classical music and whatever music you want. The way you, it's here. It's right here in my hand. The only way you're going to manifest it so you can hear it is you got to tune the antenna into the station that brings it, brings it to you. So understand it's in your hand. You got to tap into it. Now understand also all the referrals that you could ever handle ever are right here in your hand right here you need to tap the radio station which is the reticular activating system you need to tune the radio station into the referrals just like you tune the radio into music that's sitting in my hand when this is vibrating at the right vibration it's it just sucks the music in and there's starts of play you want to suck the referrals in so you can make more money now you must learn to program the minds of your referral partners Let's take this one level deeper and let's talk about an acorn. So this is an acorn. Now, if I plant the acorn, what grows? 
an oak tree. I'm not going to play any guessing games with you. An oak tree grows if we plant a unicorn. Not, I mean, an acorn. Plant a unicorn. I don't know what's going to grow. If we plant an acorn, we get an oak tree. Now, <clears throat> if we cut this seed open, is there a big giant tree inside of it? The answer is no. There's not a tree inside of it. It's a mass of motion. So if you open it up, what's inside the acorn is the potential to become an oak tree. The only way it becomes an oak tree is because it's vibrating at a certain frequency that can only create an oak tree. It can't create a lemon tree. It can't create a rose bush. It can't create a pine tree. It can only create an oak tree because that's how it's genetically programmed by vibration. The same as the antenna by vibration. Now, if what's in the water... If what's in the water, the soil, and the clouds, I mean the sun, the water, the soil, the sun. If the vitamins coming from the sun create a redwood tree, it's repelled. If it creates an oak tree, it's attracted. If the vitamins and minerals that are in the soil create a lemon tree or a rose bush, it's repelled. If it creates... An oak tree, it's attracted. Same thing with the water. The vitamins and the minerals that create an oak tree, it flies into the seed. If it doesn't, it's repelled. Before I, let, let's just, let me just show you this picture and then I'm going to ask you a question. So this little tiny seed, <clears throat> which is about this big, creates this giant tree. If this seed one day said, hey, today I want to be a rose bush and pick it up and replant itself. I'm going to be a rose bush today. A week later, picks itself up and plants itself and says, I want to be a redwood tree today. And then it picks itself up and plants itself. And I want to be a lemon tree. Will it ever grow? And the, the answer to that question is no, it will never grow. So it will only grow into a giant oak tree. Your referral business will only grow into a giant referral business if you aren't vague. If the seed is vague, it won't grow. If the seed is laser specific, from the water, from the soil, from the sun that creates an oak tree, creates a referral-based practice, flies into the seed. If it creates anything else, it's repelled. <clears throat> so the point I'm trying to make is this. Rick, what's the point of all this antenna and, and, and acorn stuff? Your elevator pitch has to be laser-specific. I'm going to give you an example shortly, but it has to be laser-specific. So I coach a lot of real estate agents. So if you're a real estate agent, the famous line is, Hey, everybody, I'm a real estate agent. I do real estate. And a great client was anybody who needs a home. I've heard dentists say, anybody who has teeth. A, a chiropractors, anybody who has a spine. But the thing is, that doesn't program the reticular activating system in other people's minds. You have to program their mind. In the next video, I'm going to give you the exact wording on how to program their mind so you can tap into their reticular activating system and then you can have a giant oak tree as a referral-based practice. So just to recap this part, you need to program your referral sources, whether it's your past clients, current clients, referral partner, COI, POI, whatever power partner, whatever you want to call it. You need to program their minds what to look for and listen for. They can send you more and better referrals. <clears throat> the retract activating system is in the brain stem. It's about two inches long. It's where all your senses come in, except the sense of smell. Your introduction must be laser specific to fire the reticular activating system in your audience. It can't be, well, good referral. Ah, anybody who has money, anybody who has back pain. No. So the exact wording will be in the next video. I also have a Patreon a page one referral away at Patreon. That's the cheapest way to get monthly coaching for me. So go check that out if you're interested. In the next video, referral marketing and the law of attraction. That's where I'm going to give you the exact word for word wording to tap into people's reticular activating system. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks very much for watching. We'll see you soon. Have a great day. Bye bye. Hey everyone, how do I attract more referrals? How do I get people to send me more referrals? God, I need more referrals. My business is way, way too inconsistent. What do I do about it? We're going to cover that and a whole lot more coming up. Welcome and thank you for watching. This video is called The Secret to the Law of Attraction and Referral Marketing. We're going to go into it a little bit more and then we're going to get exactly into how to connect the reticular activating system and the law of attraction together. Okay, so question of the day. <clears throat>
how can I get more people to send me more referrals? And the answer is you need to program their minds to know what to look for and listen for so they know what to send you. You're not getting enough referrals. You're getting the wrong kind of referrals. You're working with referral partners and not sending you referrals. It's not their fault. It's your fault because you're not teaching them properly. So in the previous video, we talked about the reticular activating system. It's a little bit about the size of my thumb, a little bit thinner. Uh, it's in the brain stem. And it's the connector between the world and your brain. So all your senses except the sense of smell go through the reticular activating system. You really should watch a previous video to really understand what we're going to cover in this. But you need to program your past clients, your current clients, your referral sources. You need to program their mind with what to look for and listen for so they can send you better referrals. Coming up at the end of this video, I'm going to give you the exact wording and the, and the methodology to do it and the system to do it. The reticular activating system starts above the brain, uh, starts above your spinal cord. It's at the base of your spine. Like I said, it's at the base of your brain. It's where all your senses come in except the, except the sense of smell. Your introduction must be laser point specific to fire the reticular activating system. Again, I'm going to go into more detail on that shortly. But before I do, ho, ho, hold on. How do I do all this stuff? Well, easy. We'll get there. We'll get there. I got to teach you some stuff first. Can't just go in and hand you the pie. I got to show you the ingredients of the pie, baby. So th th basically the ingredients are, you got to know the law of attraction. You got to know what referral marketing actually is. You got to know a little bit about the 80-20. And then I'm going to give you the exact word for word wording you use to attract more referrals into your life. The mind is everything. What we think we become. Buddha. The law of attraction. Another uh, way it said is the law of attraction says that positive or negative thoughts bring positive or negative experiences into one's life. Like energy, attracting like energy exists through which a person can improve their health, wealth, and personal relationships. I'm not a coach that does that. Well, I'm a wealth coach, but this is what I am. I want you to have more referrals and less leads. My goal in life would be that you never worked with a lead again as long as you're in business. You only work with referrals. I want your wife, your, your, your life to look like this. You're in the middle and all these people are sending you stuff and you're sending them their, them stuff and everybody's sending each other referrals and they're easy to close, all that good stuff. We attract positive experiences and opportunities by achieving residence with the proposed energetic law. I'm going to teach you how to tap into that coming up in about nine slides. Hey, if you're getting value out of all my trainings, my YouTube channel, one referral away, do me a favor. Smash the like button, subscribe, tell your friends about it. Doing my best to get the word about networking out there to everyone. There's a, my, my passion in life is to teach people how not to cold call, door knock, or buy leads. If you had enough referrals coming in, which are 10,000 times easier to close, you would not need leads. But wait. Hey, there's more. Rick, what's referral marketing? I know what referral marketing is. Well, we'll see if you know what referral marketing is or not. We're not going to go too, too deep today. Referral marketing is a strategy to encourage passionate customers and POI, purse of influence, center of influence, circle of influence, sphere of influence. In the networking world, it's called power partner to directly refer their network to you and your business. You need to teach them how to do it or they won't know how. And they won't do it. And then you won't get referrals. Then you're not making enough money. And you're looking at other people going, why does he make so much? And I don't. I work 10 times harder than him. How can he makes more than more than I do? Because he might be working a little bit smarter, maybe losing a little bit more leverage. 82% of Americans seek recommendations from their networks when considering a purchase. If you're a financial planner, real estate agent, mortgage lender, insurance agent, chiropractor, dentist, network marketer, do you really want a cold call. Like attorneys, they can't cold call. It'd be disbarred for that. I want business coming to you, not you chasing business. We referred customers have a higher profit margin, a higher retention rate. They're so much easier to close. It's not even up for conversation. Referral marketing is a natural fit in industries where your customers and partners. Uh, that's a big old typo right there. They're eager to tell people about you and your business partners. Now how to, and wow. We'll fix that later. Reform market is a natural fit for industries where you need customers to tell other people about you. You just need to teach them how. You want them to, yeah, you want them to 
start bragging about you, telling other people. So when people call on the phone, hey, you just sold my next door neighbor's house. He said, you're awesome. I want to work with you. That deal is 99% done. You're not going to be worrying about them asking for discounts and all that good stuff. So how do we do this? How do we take the law of attraction with referral marketing and put them together? There's only one way. Word for word quotes. It has to be word for word. It's the only way to tap into the reticular activating system and use the law of attraction. So I'm going to put this and, and explain to you what laser specific means. Let me first tell you what it's not. You'll have a dentist go, hey, everybody, a good a good referral for me. Anybody who has teeth, a chiropractor will say, hey, a good referral for me. Anybody who has a spine, you're not going to get any referrals that way. Um, real estate agents, a lot of times, they'll say things like, hey, everyone, a good referral for me is anybody who needs a home. Everybody needs a home. And then they wonder why they don't have any referrals. And they go back to door knocking and cold calling. When you're vague, you get vague results. Um, so Zig Ziglar had a saying, do you want to be a, a, a meaningful, specific, or a wandering generality? In the networking world, throwing a wide net is not what you do. If you want to market for leads, you throw a wide net. Networking has to be laser specific because it's one person talking to another person trying to fire the reticular activating system in the brainstem. Again, if you don't know what that is, go back to video number eight. I am now going to show you something that I very rarely show anybody. This is a piece of the secret sauce and how I've made millions and millions and millions of dollars in networking because you got to be specific. So I'm going to give you some examples for some different industries here. <clears throat> I don't want you to steal these more than I want you to get ideas. And I want you to create the wording that helps with where you are, where you're located and what you're looking for. So real estate examples would be, this is what you would teach your clients, your power partners, your sphere of influence to listen for. Hey, a great referral for me would be, a, a, if you hear a friend or family member or a client say any of the following, I'm thinking about buying a rental property. I've been, I've been renting. I wonder if it's time to buy. We're thinking about relocating. We have baby number three on the way. It's time to upsize. Oh, we're empty nesters. It's time to downsize. That's just some ideas of how to fire the reticular activating system as a, a real estate professional. Insurance agents might say things like, hey, a great referral for me would be a friend, family member, or client who you hear say, I can't ever get my insurance agent on the phone. My insurance agent has horrible customer service. My 15-year-old is getting ready to drive. My insurance premiums are freaking killing me. We have kid number two on the way. I guess it's time to think about life insurance. Financial planners might say things like a great referral for me is if you hear a friend, family member, or a client say any of the following, I don't know how I'm ever going to be able to retire. I have to start saving for my kid's college fund. I make good money, but I don't know where it all goes. I need to start saving for retirement. I don't have time to manage my investments. A dentist might say something like, uh, to their patients as they're leaving, hey, do me a favor. We're still, we're still always looking for great referrals and great people like you. If you hear one of your friends or family members say something like, I need my teeth whitened. Boy, your teeth look amazing. Who does your teeth? I hate my smile. My dentist is too heavy handed. Ouch. I need a good dental hygienist. Think of me. So that's the secret to tapping into the reticular activating system and taking advantage of the law of reciprocity and building referral marketing is word for word quotes. Down in the details of this video is a, is a link to download a PDF. So there, it's got four parts. It'll help you walk through word for word, how to craft your elevator pitch, and then uh, watch the video I'm about to show you the link to, and then you follow along with that template. So down is the link to the video, down is the link to the template. The way it can help you if if you want to double, triple, quadruple your business, no doubt I can help you with that. If you need one-on-one -on -one coaching, you need more referrals, you don't want to cold call anymore, you don't want to keep buying leads, you want to know how to approach power partners, you want to teach how your clients and your and your power partners, your spheres of influence, how to send you more referrals, how to set coffee meetings, how to do the networking presentation, all that, I can certainly help you. All the information is that one referral away. I'd like you to key on something when you go there, this is what you're going to see. These two boxes are all you really need to look at if you're interested in elevator pitch. If you want the course, 
then it's this one right here, the whole course and the info is there. I'm not going to push that on you right now. So if you click on this button, you get the video, get your PDF, fill out your elevator pitch. Congratulations, you're done. If you want me to not only have you email it to me and you want me to take it on screen, video myself critiquing it, putting it together, rebuilding it and reading it to you on video and then putting that video on my YouTube channel, that's only 99 bucks. So if you want that, then you click this button and you'll get the full critique from me. If you're interested in uh, supporting the channel, I'm on Patreon. Uh, I do monthly coaching for that. It's at one referral away. So it's Patreon, one referral away. That's my contact info. It's Rick Silva, one referral away at Gmail. Thank you very, very much for watching. I hope you got something out of this and go back and watch the eight other parts if this is your first one that you've watched. Take care. Please like and subscribe. We'll see you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.